important to this episode of ATS FE, ATS Fully Engaged Battlefield Walkarounds. Uh, ATS FE BWs are created to discuss the quote unquote historical situation, uh, briefly mention the components, and more importantly, what's, what may or may not be missing. Uh, let you know if there's a VATS module, uh, and then dive deep into the counters, uh, scenarios, module notes, you know, the real BW, Battlefield Walkaround, and the map. In today's episode, Obviously, I'll be talking, taking a look at uh, the ATS EVO basic game, 44 Jungle or Bust. So with that, let's, let's take, a, take a look at this <clears throat> product. So the historical situation, uh, there isn't one beyond apparently the name. Uh, it's 1944 in the jungle somewhere. Uh, that's not unusual for, I think, the basic games. Uh, well, some of the basic games, uh, but for the EVO products in particular... They are geomorphic maps with a smattering of scenarios uh, across those maps that represent a bunch of different uh, points in time across whatever it is they're trying to convey. So Volga or Bus is the uh, Eastern Front one, so there's going to be some Eastern Front scenarios in there. And then Hedros or Bus is the Western Front basic game module for EVO. So it'll be Western Front modules. Uh, so this one obviously being the jungle is going to be the Pacific <coughs> uh, scenarios. So what do you what do you get in the in the uh, ziplock? You get 20 pages of EVO rules. So those you know come like this: three hole punched. These are the basic rules. Uh, as you heard on our hot take, you know there's some issues. Um, buyer beware, maybe a little bit on that. Um, so you're gonna get that. You're gonna get four map panels, which we'll which we'll go over. Um, un, unlike. Uh, you know, other games, uh, you know, the basic games are supposed to be uh, a little bit more easily digestible so you don't get a ton of map panels. You get four. Um, and that's what you see here. You get six scenarios, which cover a gamut of, of things. We'll cover those a little bit. You get two sheets of the OVR counters, one sheet of uh, Japanese and one sheet of Marines. <clears throat> and we'll take a little bit uh, of a look at that. Um, so basically what doesn't come in the module, so... Just like it says on the website, uh, you get everything you need except for the markers and obviously dice. Uh, those you'll have to provide yourself. yourself. Um, th these scenarios could be played with the regular ATS rules, but obviously it also comes with the EVO rules, so you could play them technically right out of the Ziploc as long as you have, uh, I think it says, large and small markers to go with it. So that, that's pretty good. Uh, as far as VATS or VATS uh, support goes, there is no VATS module for the EVO products. Um, I don't expect there will be one for a while. Um, Scott Eagles probably has his hands full making other modules for the ATS stuff. So let's uh, let's take a look at the counters, just real real brief. I mean, so they're OVR, right? So you can see these OVR counters. So the overhead view, if you flip them over, that's the prone view. This is the upright view, um, which of course is no longer used in the in the rules. You use a marker to to do that. You know, there's not really much special about the, the counters. Um, you're not going to see anything particularly noteworthy or new or anything like that. Uh, the one thing I will note is that the this particular module, like the um, Volga or Bus module, has no vehicles in it. Um, not that the Pacific War was a huge vehicle war, but just so you know. Uh, so let's move on and talk about the scenarios a bit. A bit. You get six scenarios. Uh, they range from 7 to 11 turns. All but one of them use all four map panels, which I think is pretty cool. And one uses maybe uh, roughly half of the map. Let me take a look. Uh, yeah, hex is numbered greater than or equal to 10 are playable. So if we look at the map, yeah, so 10 and greater is pretty, pretty much looks like it's the bottom two map panels for um, that's scenario three. The Devil's Horn uh, uses that. As I said, there's no vehicles, so they're all infantry fights, mortars, you know, machine guns. Um, no, uh, even no big infantry weapons. Although I think the Japanese do have, I thought I saw somewhere they have some kind of uh, um, larger kind of infantry gun. Doesn't really matter. Um, it's you know, pretty much an infantry fight. Um, uh, you know, my usual pet peeve, the scenarios are, or the maps geomorphic. So, although not truly geomorphic, so you can't just arrange them any which way and they'll go together. Um, uh, unlike a true geomorphic, this is a a map um, made up of four panels, so that's interesting. But of course, it doesn't represent any particular area. It's representative of of um, <laughs> all the areas from 
you know, let's see, Cape, Cape Gloucester, New Britain, to the Marianas, uh, Guam, to Peleliu, which we're going to talk about in a minute, to Iwo Jima. So that's, you know, the scenarios all cover that. So, uh, you know, it, it is the way that it is. So um, one interesting thing, because it's ge uh, semi-geomorphic, I guess, scenario two has, has an interesting SSR. I'm just going to read it to you. All level one hexes are treated as ground level airfield hexes. So if we look at this map, and you can't see the whole thing, but I'm going to tell you right now, these are the only non-level one hexes on the map. I guess, you know, get I'm assuming that's a ravine uh, since it has bridges. But So that means the entire map is airfield, which, okay, but that's a lot. That's a lot of, at 50 meters a hex, that's a pretty big airfield. Um, anyway, uh, take that for, for what it's worth. Um, also, one of the things that are kind of a little bit odd in the um, scenarios, scenario three and six are both supposedly night scenarios. However, in uh, scenario three, LOS at night is four hexes to simulate night, according to SSR, um, but in, Scenario six, the night LOS is six hexes. So I don't know if maybe it's dusk, it's not quite night or whatever. There are no night rules, I don't think, in the EVO rules. I don't, I don't recall specifically, but maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's experimental. Um, but there you go. That's that's the scenarios. Um, you know, other than that, I mean, the, the scenarios look look pretty interesting as straight up infantry fights. So, you know, if I get some time, maybe I'll throw some counters down and, and have a go at it. Although you, I'll probably use regular ATS counters, not the uh, OVR ones, just because then I don't have to punch these. Um, so we've already kind of looked at the map. Let's take a look at it a little bit a little bit uh, more in depth. As, as mentioned above, Scenario 2 makes every level level 1 hex into an airfield hex. That yeah, makes uh, for a really odd billiard table effect across the map, I think. Because um, I guess you ignore all the uh, <laughs> palm trees. We'll talk about that in a minute too. But um, in jungle hexes, everything's an airfield hex. So that's just strange. At least that, that's what I'm assuming what that means. So, you know, it's, it's early days in the EVO product. But, but, you know, on that, the jungle hexes, you know, where are they? That's my question. Uh, and, and orchard, so let me back up a little bit. So here, here, right here, let me zoom in, zoom in a little bit, right? That's the jungle. Looks like woods, right? Those are palm trees. Wait, those look like orchards. This? No, no, no. Those are kunai, not crops, but they look like kunai. I mean, um, they're supposed to be kunai. So just as a, as a comparison, you know, I thought I'd pull out the Peleliu map. So if you zoom in, you can see, yeah, it looks like woods, but it's a much darker representation. I'm not sure. So you can see here, right? Um, zoom in a little bit here. You can see the little, I don't know, fuzzy outlines. So those are palm trees. There was a couple other maps um, that have it even more. You can tell even more that it, that it looks supposed to be palm trees. So, I, you know, I don't know the design choice behind that. Uh, oh, by the way, <laughs> here's the Peleliu airfield, right? Three, five hexes across, maybe. That scenario I mentioned, that's the Peleliu airfield. So apparently it turns the whole map into that. Um, into that airfield. I don't know if that's a throwback to the supposed to be 25 meter hexes, and, you know, I think in riflemen or whatever, but there you have it. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, you're, you know, you're going to get six scenarios you can play on the map. You can play using your regular counters. You can use the OVR counters. You can use the ATS rules or the EVO rules. It doesn't really matter. Um, but that's what comes in the Ziploc, and that is the uh, 44, let me get the back, 44 jungle or bust. All right, hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>